Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently we are in the 5th module of our hands on machine learning course with Python and this 5th module is all about mathematics for machine learning. So today in this video we are going to discuss about two main important types of statistics. So these two types of statistics are descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Okay. So in case you are watching my videos for the first time, hi, in this YouTube channel I am making a hands on machine learning course with python and if you want to learn this machine learning course from the beginning i will give the link for my machine learning course playlist in the description of, of this video and also in the icards so you can check that out okay so with that being said let's get started with today's video so the two main important types of statistics are descriptive statistics and inferential statistics so these names are self explanatory so descriptive means giving some descriptions giving some summarization to the data inferential statistics means finding some inferences from the data and finding some insights from the data okay so this is what stands for descriptive statistics and inferential statistics so where uh, we just try to describe the data better in a descriptive statistical approach whereas in the case of inferential statistical approach we try to get inferences about the data and we also try to predict uh, you know future cases so we try to make future predictions so that is about inferential statistics so this is the difference between descriptive and inferential statistics and now let's understand where we can use this kind of approaches okay so there are two main fields that uh, uses statistics and machine learning a lot okay so those two fields are data analysis and data science okay so what a data analyst do is get the data and do a lot of analysis on them so this analysis helps them to understand the data better so you can consider this example. So there is a company and they can hire a data analyst to uh, analyze their previous year's uh, sales. And an analyst can go through all the sales data and find some interesting, you know, uh, insights from those data. So he can he can go through it and find what are what is the total investment made by the company, what is the profit made by them, and what are the various uh, profit percentage and other things he can find from the data. So in the case of descriptive statistics, we use uh, some numerical measures on the data. Okay. Whereas what a data scientist used to do is he can use the data. He, he can try to find several insights from the data or he can try to find the inferences from the data. And based on these inferences, he can suggest the management of the company of various strategies they can uh, take to increase their uh, you know, profit percentage. So this is an example of where we can use descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Okay. So uh, now let's try to understand these concepts in a more detailed way. So if you want to uh, have a more definition based understanding of this, descriptive statistics means descript descriptive statistics are used to describe the basic features of the data in the study. They provide simple summaries about the sample and the measures. Okay. So what we do in uh, descriptive statistics is find some numerical measures. So I have given uh, this example here. So these numerical measures can be a uh, mean of the data set or it can be um, median of the data set or it can be mode of the data set. So these are some measures which tells you what is what kind of values are present in a data set and it, it basically summarizes the data. So as the name suggests, okay. So what we do in inferential statistics is it takes data from a sample and makes inferences and predictions about the larger population from which the sample was drawn. So what we do in inferential statistics is in a lot of the cases the population will be very large. Population in the sense the data set can be very large and in some cases we cannot go through the entire data. So in that cases we choose some sampling techniques to get the sample from the population and we uh, you know analyze this sample to gain insights and inferences. So th these insights can be used to make future predictions. So this is the uh, you know difference between descriptive statistics and inferential statistics where in descriptive statistics we just you know find some measures to summarize the data whereas in the case of inferential statistics we try to find the insights from the data. So if you still have doubt on these topics it will be clear if you understand this with some interesting examples okay. So in descriptive statistics there are two main important measures so as i have already told you in a descriptive statistics we generally deal with a numerical measures right so the two main important measures are the measure of central tendencies and the measure of variability okay so in central tendencies we measure the values such as mean median and mode so mean is nothing but the average of the data average value of the data and median and mode are you know similar to uh, you know mean but in a different way 
So I'll make separate video on what is meant by mean, median and mode. So it is not uh, the topic of importance in this video. So just understand that we try to find the values of central tendencies. So they are like the representation values of the entire data. And there is another measure called a uh, measure of variability. So examples for this is range, standard deviation, variance. So these values tells us how much, uh, you know, the data varies from the mean value. So these are the two main important measures. So what we need to understand here is, so we just give some numerical value to the data that represents it better. Okay. So I'll explain you this with an interesting example. So you can think about GPA. So what is this GPA? So every one of us would have gone through this, right? So a student goes to college and he takes a lot of exams. So let's say that he has uh, taken about uh, eight semester exams and there are uh, several subjects in each semester, right? So if we want a single value to measure the academic, per, uh, you know, academic performance of a student, you can ask us GPA, right? So, you know, this GPA is a single value and this single value is a representation of the academic performance of the student in a entire college life, right? So this is an example of a descriptive statistics where we try to find a numerical value that represents the data better, that describes the data better or it summarizes the data better. So this is what we deal with in descriptive statistics. And uh, now let's try to understand this in a more machine learning approach. So how we can use this in a machine learning project. So um, let's uh, get this descriptive statistic statistics of house price data. So before just, you know, looking at this table, let's uh, see this data set. So this is Boston house price data set. So we have already made a video on Boston house price prediction. So I'll give the link for this project video in the description of this uh, video. So you can go through that if you want more information about this uh, data set. They have given the details of the data set. So it totally contains 14 features. 14 features represent 14 columns. And totally we have 506 entries. 506 entries mean 506 different house values. So what we do in this case is try to find the price of the houses based on several parameters. Okay. So I'm not going to explain all the parameters here. So if you want more detail, you can go to that project video. So I'll just explain a few measures. So you can see here CRIM. So this represents the crime rate happening in a area. Okay. So this is the crime rate. And if you uh, if you can see here, this is uh, RM. So RM represents the average number of rooms in uh, rooms present in a present in the house. And you can see what is the tax uh, you know they generally pay. And finally we have this price. So this is in thousands of dollars. So 24 represents 24 thousands of dollars. So this is the examples of the sample of the data set. So this data set contains about 506 entries. So I have just given you the first four values. Okay. So if we, we want to apply some descriptive statistical approach, or if we want to find some measures that represent that represents the data, we find the measures such as the mean standard deviation, minimum values, percentiles, etc. Okay. So count represents how many values are there in each column okay so we know that there are about 506 values right so mean is nothing but the average value so the average crime rate value is about 3.61 and the standard deviation is 8.6 and this uh, value is given for each column okay and we have this minimum value and maximum value so when you subtract the maximum value and the minimum value you get get the range okay so it is an example of uh, the measure of variability right we also have the standard deviation here so this is how you can apply the descriptive statistics on a data set to understand the data better, to understand the magnitude of the values in the data better. So this is how you can apply descriptive statistics on a uh, uh, machine learning uh, data set or a data science data set. Okay. So now let's try to understand inferential statistics with a similar example. So we have already seen the definition for inferential statistics where uh, if the population is large, we take uh, you know, a sample of this population and we try to get some inferences from this data which helps us to make future prediction from this sample. So this prediction made by the sample will be, uh, you know, correlated with the population as well. Okay. So because the sample uh, represents the population, right? So you can see here, so there is a population with various elements. So we have a sample that represents the population better. So you can see here, there is a red color triangle here and there is a green color square here and there is a yellow color circle here. So you can see here, this sample contains all the different elements present in the population. So what does this uh, represent is if we get a sample from a population, uh, you know, there shouldn't be any uh, uh, difference between it. So the elements present in the population should be present in the sample as well. We shouldn't miss any important details. 
So there are several sampling techniques uh, there and how we can sample the data from a population. So I will also make a separate video on that topic. For now, just understand that, uh, you know, we just want to take a sample from the population because we cannot always uh, go through the entire data or the entire population. So we take the sample of the data. So if you want to, you know, analyze the data of the entire nation, people on the entire nation, we cannot take uh, the data from the entire people. So for that, we choose a sample that best represents the entire population. So once we take this, we do some analysis to get some inferences and insights from the data and uh, make some predictions. So in the previous slide, I have explained to you how you can apply descriptive statistical approach on house price data, right? Now let's understand how we can apply some inferential techniques. So this is a correlation heat map of the house price data set. So the same data set that I have uh, explained to you here. So for this data set, so this is the correlation map. So you can see the color uh, values here. So darker the color, the value is more. So we have the values from plus one all the way to minus 0.6. So if the value is more, if the value is positive, that means the two variables are positively correlated. So these are the columns that we have discussed. Okay. So we have columns here in the vertical uh, scale and also in the horizontal axis. Okay. So here we try to find the relationship between the variables. So variables are nothing but these columns. So we call this either variables or features. Okay. So what we try to do is find the relationship between them. If the value is positive, that means the two variables are positively correlated. If the value is negative, that means the two values are negatively correlated. Okay. So let's try to understand this. So you can see this crime column here, this crime variable here. And if you come all the way down here, this is price, right? So this vertical line is the value for price. And this uh, first horizontal line is for the crime rate. We know that if the crime rate for an area is huge, if it is more, people are not going to buy houses in that area, right? And you can see a negative value here, a negative value of minus 0.4. That means crime rate and price of houses are negatively correlated. If uh, the crime rate is more, people are not going to buy houses in that area. And what happens is the house prices drop in that area, right? So we can say that crime rate and price are negatively correlated. So negative correlation means if one value increases, the other value decreases. So you, here you can say that if crime value increases, price value decreases, right? So these two variables, crime and price are negatively correlated. Now you can see the RM column here. Okay. So RM represents the num average number of rooms present in the house. So if the number of rooms is more, the house is going to be bigger and the price of the house is also going to be bigger, right? So you can see the here it has a positive value of 0 0.7. That means these two values are uh, positively correlated. The number of rooms and the price. So here you can say that uh, there is a positive correlation between a room and uh, the price of the house where if one value increases which is RM the other value which is price also increases. So these are two kinds of correlation which is positive correlation and negative correlation. So these are the inferences we can get from this data. So you know there are several techniques. So this is not just the only technique. So correlation is not the only concept in inferential statistics. There are a lot of techniques in inferential statistics which we will use to get the insights from the data. So once we get these insights, we can also make future predictions using some analysis like regression analysis to find uh, what is the price of the houses can be in this case. So what we do is once we analyze the data, we can train our machine learning model or statistical model, which if you give all this data, it can predict what can be the price of the house. So this is the end result of this particular project. So this is how you can get inference from a data set and you can make future prediction. So that is about uh, descriptive statistics and inferential statistics where in descriptive statistics we try to uh, you know describe the data and summarize the data based on some numerical measures such as the measure of central frequency or the measure of variability whereas in the case of inferential statistics we try to find the inferences and insights from the data and make future predictions. So I hope you have understood the things covered in this video and I'll see you in the next upload. Thanks for watching.